In our episode about terraforming Venus, we talked about cooling the planet with a giant sunshade, and then hand-wavingly bind up all that carbon dioxide. We did the same with Mars, filling the atmosphere with greenhouse gases to warm it up, and releasing the planet's vast stores of CO2 to thicken the atmosphere. And then just crash in a few comets worth of water and upgrade them to a three-star resort. So we're pitching this as a new series on the Discovery Network called Flip My Planet Canada. Now let's turn our imagination towards another rock ball that is really more of a fixer-upper, the moon. Now I know, you've never even thought of the moon as a place that we could possibly terror renovate. Go ahead and imagine with me all the possibilities of a verdant green and blue little world hanging in the night sky. Doesn't that sound great? So what does it take? Do we tear it down and just use the orbital lot space? Should we raise it up and lay a new foundation? Or could we get away with a few coats of paint and adding an atrium on the backside? Well, fortunately for me, scientist and sci-fi author Gregory Planetary Makeover Benford has already done the math. So let's take a look at what we need to get the moon habitable. For starters, the fact that the moon is so close to Earth is a huge advantage. This is like living on the same block as a Home Depot, and we won't have to travel far to get supplies and equipment to and from our project. We're going to need an atmosphere thick enough to breathe and trap in the sun's heat. And this takes wild comet capture and harvest. Tear them apart, smash them into the moon. Now Benford notes that you probably want to be careful not to let an entire comet collide with the moon, because it might spray your primary investment home with debris and do a little damage to the resale value or potentially annoy your tenants. This could get bad enough that we'd have to terraform Earth to get it livable again. And then you'd have to bring in Mike Holmes to publicly shame us and put our primary residence back in order. So after you'd splattered a few comets on the moon, it would have an atmosphere almost immediately. The transfer of momentum from the comet chunks would get the moon rotating more rapidly. If you invest a little more in your planning stage, you can get the moon spinning once every 24 hours and even tilt its axis to get seasons. Benford estimates that we need 100 Halley comet masses to get the job done. Now that might sound like a pretty tall order, but it's tiny to the number of comets we'd need for your Mars or Venus real estate scheme. The maintenance and upkeep isn't going to be without its challenges. Low gravity on the moon means that it can't hold on to its atmosphere for longer than a few thousand years. So once you got the process going, you need to be constantly replenishing your orbital cottage with fresh atmosphere. Fortunately, we've got a whole solar system's worth of ice to exploit. The benefits of a terraformed summer home on the moon are numerous. For example, if the moon had an atmosphere as thick as the Earth's, you could strap on a pair of wings and fly around in the 1 6 gravity. The enormous gravity of the Earth would pull the moon's oceans around the planet with 20 meter tides. You could surf the tide for kilometers as it washes across the surface in a miniature version of the shallow water scene in Interstellar. This might be the greatest sponsorship opportunity for GoPro of all time. The go kite boarding. You're about to get more extreme. Now, everyone always wants to talk about terraforming Venus or Mars. Let them be. That's too much work. The next time someone brings it up at D&D night, you can blow their minds with your well-crafted argument on why we want to start with the moon. So what would you do on a terraformed moon? Tell us in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Never miss an episode by clicking subscribe. Our Patreon community is the reason these shows happen, and we'd like to thank Christopher Graham, Bernier Poulin, and the rest of the members who support us in making great space and astronomy content. Members get advanced access to episodes, extras, contests, and other shenanigans with Jay, myself, and the rest of the team. Want to get on the action? Click here. It would have almost an atmosphere immediately. The transfer, no, I got that wrong.